contents today we will discuss about the very important surgical part that is uh, examination of swelling now why this is so important is the commonest presentation in surgical practice and swelling if you examine carefully and properly you will be able to clinch the diagnosis in more or less 80 percent of cases so that is why it is very very important to do the examination learning objectives are to learn how to take history in patients with swelling to learn different clinical approaches in patient presenting as swelling as i have told it is very very important to clinch the diagnosis why this swelling has occurred to learn differential diagnosis of the swelling there are so many causes for swelling so if you you should be able to give what is the probable cause so this is called differential diagnosis so that is very very important and relevant investigations once you able to clinch the differential diagnosis and do relevant investigation to have a final conclusion and of course later we will have a video demonstration of how exactly we will examine a patient with the swelling so that this presentation will be able to conclude with a video demonstration so we will have a clear idea now we have been telling swelling 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 because it's so common condition now if it is so what is the exact meaning of the swelling swelling is a gross terminology means abnormal obvious protrusion without affecting the gross nature of the part or organ so this is very very important without affecting the gross nature of the part or organ now even though we commonly use swelling in the surface in certain situations we use other terminology like lump or mass so when we use those terminology now lump is defined as lesion within the organ or causing the alteration in the gross nature or shape of the part or organ example is breast lump so there is a clinical difference between the swelling and the lump and one more terminology i have already told that is mass this is even though same about the swelling but difference is it is usually arising from the deeper plane so what is the mass mass is the lesion which is difficult to define it is arising from the deeper plane for example mass abdomen you see that exactly this is the swelling the surface this is what exactly defined this is the breast lump so it is from the organ so it's the mass abdomen from the deeper plane so this figures clearly gives the idea how these terminologies are used in different situations now history taking is very very important in uh, any clinical examination and more so in examination of the uh, swelling because if you take proper history your clinical diagnosis will be made far better better way so what are the components of that introduce and explain yourself and wishing don't don't immediately start uh, tell everything about what you are having problem but tell i am so and so and where you are from so so tell about your so be very gentle with them that is very very important make patient comfortable once you start your conversation in a simpler easier way they will be very comfortable then they will open up you have to make them to open up so that they will speak properly otherwise if they are very rigid if you are very reserved then they don't tell their problem then your whatever history you want to elicit will be inadequate so make the patient comfortable and be pleasant don't be very stiff and uh, or very angry look all those things then they will get annoyed with how to speak to this fellow it's very very difficult they will be tensed up as such they are ill that's why they are coming to you that is called a human touch you look at the, your face your body language face language lang eye language is a very very important thing for human beings so your language is very very important to appreciate yourself so they'll come out with whatever history you want and take consent it is not a return consent when you when you, they come to you it is understood that they come with the consent when you speak with you with the confident then it is considered as a consent so take a verbal consent they understand that you are doing something better for their disease and so on it's a verbal consent you do not have a written consent when you examine a patient and create privacy it is not you when you ask about a disease uh, illness uh, when everybody is around you ask uh, and it is uh, they should have some privacy to tell about tell about their problems uh, not when with the public 
So create a privacy when you take the history or when examine this patient is very, very important to develop their confidence towards you. So this is a human touch, this is very, very important. They will be with you, so you go together with the patient always. So that is the history taking basic thing. So what all history you will take when you examine a patient or when patient comes with the history of swelling anywhere in the body. Age, this is very, very important. First thing you ask, what is your age? It's very, very relevant. Many disease occurs in the newborn, like cystic hygroma. What is exactly it is I'm going to discuss later. It's a swelling which occurs in the neck. That occurs in the newborn. Bronchial cyst occurs in the adolescent, second decade or early third decade. And they are congenital. Even, even though uh, in different age group it occurs, they are actually begins at birth. That's why it is congenital. So the age is very, very important. Certain disease occurs at later age group. Malignancy occurs at later age group. So age is very, very important uh, to identify what exactly this swelling may be. And sex is important that you don't require to ask, but it's understood. So breast lump commonly occurs in females and uh, uterine mass, ovary mass occurs in females. And occupation is very, very important. See, laryngeal cell in the neck, when they blow the trumpet uh, or flute, repeatedly they do that professionals, then their thyroid membrane may bulge and they will develop laryngocyl swelling. And uh, those who are regularly sweeping the or drying the place or rooms, then they will get the swelling in the knee joint or their prayer, their kneeling and praying people, they will again get the uh, swelling in the uh, knee joint. They are called clergyman's knee or they are called as housemaid's knee because of the repeated friction, inflammation over the prepetalar bursa or over the uh, infrapetalar bursa. That is called as clergyman's knee. Prepetalar is called as housemaid's knee. Infrapetalar bursa is called as clergyman's knee. So occupation is important so that if such relevant swelling is there, you can correlate, oh, this is, this is like this. So it's occupation. Because of this occupation, it has started. So that is again very, very important. And address certain disease occurs in certain situations, like uh, thyroid swelling occurs in the interior areas. And in the coastal region, mainly lymphedema, filarial disease occurs. Certain areas, certain disease is quite common. So if you say their occupation address, we'll have the geographical idea. So that we'll have the idea. So probably because of because they are from this place. So that is why this particular disease is swelling is because of this disease. So address is where, where they are from is very, very relevant uh, to get the... Uh, now look at this figure, cystic hygroma. See the age? Newborn age. And look at this uh, adolescent age, maybe 20 year old, bronchial cysts are congenital. Look at this man, he's a trumpet blower. He may be around 50s. So this is the swelling here. So laryngeal cell occurs in this age group. So these are the relevant thing, age, where swelling, typical swelling occurs. Again, see that breast lump in female patient. Thyroid nodule, see, thyroid nodule occurs commonly in females. But when it occurs in male, it is very, very important because many, many thyroid nodule in males could be malignancy. So you have to give real importance uh, even thyroid nodule occurs in male because it could be malignancy. You have to, should be suspicious about that. And in history, you know that history of present illness is there, history of uh, past history is there, then uh, personal history is there, family history is there, and treatment history is there. All those things are there. So we'll start one by one. Now, first thing is very, very important that is history of present illness. So we'll go the, we'll discuss about that to get the idea about the swelling. Now, swelling, that's the most important thing we'll ask for. What all things we'll ask for in swelling? Duration. So first thing when patient comes with the swelling, ask how long it was there. Now, this duration is very, very important. Now, if swelling is of short duration, very short duration, it could be inflammatory, maybe abscess, maybe some infection, whatever it is. If it is long duration, it may be some benign swelling, not very short, but short duration, it could be malignant. So we'll just look on that, what this duration means. So cystic hygroma present since birth. So it is there immediately. Acute inflammatory conditions are of very short duration. You've got infection, inflammation, pain, fever, everything. So say I got two days duration, only one or two days, few days. Whereas benign swellings of long duration, you'll say I got a swelling in the arm, forearm. It may be neurofibroma or lipoma. You say I got many years, three years, four years, five years, like that. 
Whereas malignancies of short duration, he'll say, I got a swelling in the breast or I got a swelling in the head or scalp. He says it is there since uh, uh, two months or three months. So you have to suspect it could be malignant. And site of the beginning of the swelling, he'll say exact uh, swelling, especially in the neck and other areas, he'll say it has started below, lower part, then it has extended above or extended sideward, extended inward like that. So this site is very, very important so that we can have the anatomical location where it started and eventually how it exactly it has progressed when you discuss about the duration. Now, mode of onset and progress, this is what I want to highlight, mode of onset. So how it started, where it has progressed, that is very, very important. See, sometimes it, selling might have started after injury. He might have told three months back I have fallen. Then uh, after that uh, I had a swelling and this swelling is uh, slowly increased. So we have to think whether it could be a small clot inside that which has increased and uh, now it has become painless. Initially it was painful. So it may be hematoma or he might say that he had a small scratch then it started swelling then it becomes painful and tender. And then, then you say that it is probably abscess like that. So mode of onset and progress, that is also important. So some swelling may be there for a long time, then suddenly it may increase. Multinodular goiter for a long time, recent increase in the size might have changed into malignant transformation like that. Or some neurofibroma is there since a long time and you will say suddenly last three months it is increasing. So it has turned into malignancy, neurofibrosarcoma. So based on the progress of the swelling, slower progressive, rapidly progressive or initially slow progressive, eventually rapidly progressive. So all those different combinations, uh, they will tell this everything is very, very important to say probably what is the problem, what type of disease patient is having. Sudden onset, hematoma and abscess formation, I have already told.